All right, folks, according to my clock on my computer, it is 7 p.m. And we'll call the meeting to order. Mr. Bentley, will you please call the roll? Yes, Mr. Hardy. Um, Chairman Hardy? Here. Yes, Vice Chair Tuckfield? Here. Member Provisano? Here. Member Schuto? Here. Member Oliver? Here. And Rich Bentley here, all present and accounted for. Thank you very much. And I did that backwards, so I will go ahead now and recite the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The roll, the roll call has been made. Everybody is present. Approval of the minutes with one change that I'm aware of that Mr. Bentley's absence last time was excused. Mr. Mr. Chairman, Chairman. With, with that correction, I'll make a motion. We approve the August 5th, 2020 meeting minutes and had to make sure that has that member Bentley was excused from the meeting. Second. And that was member Schuto making the motion, I'm sorry. Provenzano, motion. second. Motion by Mr. Shudo, seconded by Mr. Provenzano. Mr. Bentley, call the roll, please. Sir. Mr. Shudo. Yes. Mr. Provenzano. Yes. Mr. Hardy. Yes. Mr. Tuckfield. Yes. Mr. Oliver. Yes. And Mr. Bentley, yes. So. All A's. All A's. All right. Approval of the agenda, the amended agenda, version two, that was sent out uh, by Ms. Kavanaugh. Um, did you all receive the uh, second agenda? We did. I did. Yeah. Okay. I received it. Okay. We have a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Member Bentley. Motion by Mr. Bentley? Yes. Support by Oliver. Approved by Charlie Oliver. Mr. Oliver. Mr. Bentley, call the roll, please. Okay, Mr. Bentley, yes. Mr. Oliver. Yes. Mr. Shuto. Yes. Mr. Provenzano. Yes. Mr. Tuckfield. Yes. Mr. Hardy. <coughs> yes. All eyes. Okay. Motion to approve the agenda is passed. New business. A, extension of time, preliminary plan, Miss Wood Estate site, condominiums, permanent parcel 08240, I'm sorry, 24201018, located on the south side of 23 Mile Road, quarter mile east of North Avenue, section 24. Concord Associates LLC petitioner, Mr. Box. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and uh, fellow commissioners. Uh, as you mentioned, Miss Wood Estates is a residential site condo development south of 23 Mile between North Avenue and Fairchild. Uh, the development um, has been approved uh, previously. They are looking for an extension of time on their uh, approval. Uh, it was approved initially in 2018 by both the Planning Commission and the Board, uh, and again in June of 2019. Uh, this would be their second extension. Uh, the development itself has 76 units, residential units in Phase 1 and 58 units in Phase 2. Uh, I did speak with uh, Mr. Van Tiflin, the Township Engineer. Uh, they are very close on their engineering design. Uh, and. They're, they actually, it sounds like we're very close to not needing this extension, but uh, they do in fact need it. So, uh, but they do plan to construct in the near future. So uh, they are seeking an extension of time. All departments have reviewed and recommend approval. Okay, planning commissioners. Mr. Chairman, this is uh, Commissioner Tuckfield. Tuckfield, go ahead, sir. Mr. Box, I think you touched on this, but uh, if we approve this in 18, would this would that make it accurate to say this would be the second uh, extension? 
Yep. Yeah, I think that's what I said. This is their second extension. Yep. Okay. My apologies if you said it. I, I was uh, jotting down something else. I know you said 2018, but I just wanted to verify. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Is there a motion on the floor? Or does anybody have anything else they'd like to ask? Mr. Chairman, this is Member Shudo. I'd like to grant the extension of time for one year for the preliminary, preliminary plan for Misswood Estates site condominiums. Permanent parcel 08242010018, located on the south side of 23 Mile Road, quarter mile east of North Avenue, Section 24, and pursu uh, pursuant to the planning consultant's recommendations, I could add to. Thank you, sir. Did you, did you say 018 or 011? 018. The last three numbers were 018. Okay. I would like to support that, Member Bentley. Motion by Mr. Shudo, supported by Member Bentley. Mr. Bentley, call the roll, please. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Shudo. Yes. Mr. Provisano. Yes. Mr. Oliver. Yes. yes. Mr. Hardy. Yes. Mr. Tuckfield. Yes. And I'm sorry I skipped myself. Uh, yes. Okay. Motion passes. Next item on our, our business for tonight <clears throat> is special land use. I'm sorry, did I miss something? Nope. Oh, okay. Special land use. Uh, 23 mile and car development. Personal permanent parcel 0822200. 005 and 08222 200014 and 08222000015 located on the southwest corner of 23 mile and card section 22 buddy escar petitioner mr box thank you mr chairman um so the next two items on the agenda B and C are actually both with regards to the same development. Uh, but as you mentioned, we're gonna do the, the special land use first. Um, the parcel uh, at the corner, the Southwest corner of 23 and card uh, is currently zoned C2. C2 zoning, it would require a special land use, which is what they're here seeking uh, in order to provide a drive-through. Uh, it's a commercial development with a gas station and a strip plaza and they are proposing a drive-through in conjunction with the gas station. Uh, they did receive a variance for the location of the drive-through box back in October of 2019. Uh, all departments have reviewed uh, this request and are in recommending approval at this time. Is the petitioner in the audience? Uh, yes, he is. Uh, Mr. Askar, go ahead. And uh, commissioners, if you could mute your mics, I think that would help a lot. I'm sorry, I'm here, guys. What was that question again? Sorry about that. Oh, they were just asking if you're in the audience. Yes, I am. I apologize. I am. It's my first time using Zoom, so yes, I am. Yep. Mr. So, Mr. Chairman, this is Commissioner Tuckfield. Just a quick note. I think Mr. Thompson is here. and I, He might, I don't know if he's able to speak, but just in case he's muted, I can't see. He, he typically speaks on the issues when he brings it up. So I can't see if he's muted or not, but just want to make sure we have that covered. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Well, if I'm not muted, can you hear me? Yes, we can, Mr. Thompson. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I'd like to share a screen if you would. Okay. Okay. Are you picking that up? Okay, uh, this development is located at the southwest corner of 22 Mile and Card Road. Uh, the screen in front of you shows you the, an aerial view of the site. And in the, in the upper right hand corner, you can see the existing Bouchemis. The area around it was the old landscape yard that was there probably five or six years ago uh, when uh, Mr. Askar purchased that property. And then at the extreme left, there's a residential house that uh, Mr. Askar purchased. So a year ago maybe, uh, to complete the, uh, the regularly shaped, triangular shaped parcel there. Um, 
a lot of the area, especially where the house was, a lot of that area was floodplain. And there's floodplain adjacent to the drain that goes through there. Mr. Thompson, yes. can I stop you for just a minute? Can. Ryan, I'm not seeing anything on my computer. Is anybody else having the same problem? Yeah. No, he, he's not, he didn't share a screen properly, I don't think. Okay, can you assist him with that? Um, I can try. Uh, okay. So Mr. Thompson, down at the bottom, do you see a, a button that says share screen? Actually, no, I don't. Hmm. Um, what I could do is, if you can, you can email me that, and I could share it from my screen if you'd like. Okay. There should I be a button on my screen. This, I'm Josh King. I have it on my screen if I want to share it. Oh, if, if yeah, if you, if you have the, the file. Yeah. Right up there, Josh. Yeah, I have it up right here. Cool. All right, let's try this out. Uh, you see it? If you guys can see it, I don't. <laughs> no, I don't see it either. I don't see it. Everything, uh, yeah, here it comes. Oh, here we go. Okay, good. All right, Mr. Thompson, I'm sorry to interrupt, uh, but if you'd start again, that sounds, looks good. Okay, so my screen is about uh, an inch and a half by three inches. That's all I can see. I, <laughs> excuse me, this is Charlie. Hey, Mr. Thompson, I, I'm just having a terrible time hearing you. Are you able to talk into the mic on the phone or is, okay. am I the only one having that problem? A little, a little hard to hear, but I'm, so far I've been able to hear them okay. Okay, um, hey Josh, do you wanna go ahead with the presentation? Cause I can't, I can't tell who we are right here. Okay, sure. Um, where were we? So now this is Josh talking. Is that correct? Yes, this is uh, Josh. I'm the graduate engineer for oh. Laner Associates, um, and I worked with Fadi on this project. Um, so you can see that this project is you know it's in the southwest corner of the intersection of 23 Mile and Card, and just north of the McBride Drain. Um, so it's yet. Yeah, like what uh, Josh mentioned, there's three parcels. Um, the one in the northeast corner, that's where the original Buscemi's was located. Um, and then next to that, the middle parcel, it might be better if I go to the next screen. Um, that's where the, there used to be a landscape contractor that uh, owned that, but um, Fadi, he uh, purchased that a few years ago and if you, if you look at the aerial, this is actually an old aerial, and that's actually been, most of that's cleared away, all that structures. Um, he, Fadi's did a good job just cleaning that up. And to the, what uh, Bill mentioned earlier, on the west parcel, there's a private residence, um, and Fadi just purchased that about a year ago. And it, that would just complete the triangle. You can see the big bride drain you know, kind of bordering the south property line for all three parcels. So um, it, it, I wanna also note that if you, so like south of the Big Fry Drain is the, um, there's a subdivision right there and a floodplain. And to the east is a, that's where a Walgreens is. All right, so I'm gonna show you the site plan again. So what we're proposing is there's a gas station uh, in, with a drive-through in the uh, northeast corner. And right next to it is going to be a, it's going to be a retail plaza. It's with six similarly sized spaces. And on the far west over here, that's going to be another drive-through restaurant. And down here is a medical office. Um, there's going to be signs located, and yeah, one over here near the intersection. If that's where the Buscemi's sign is going to be, and then there's going to be other signs at the approaches. So this project is going to be phased. So you can see right here that phase one will encompass the gas station and the drive-through, and that what will also entail is the detention and 
also the McBride drain um, floodplain work because we do some excavation work there. Um, let's see. And there's going to be a two approaches for phase one as well. Uh, yeah, right here, one on Card Road and the other on 23 Mile Road. There's also going to be a six foot screening wall. Um, you can kind of see it right here, kind of the south border. So phase two, that's going to be the, that retail building with that, those six spaces. And that's going to have an additional approach. Phase three and four, they're more up in the air for the specific buildings. Um, that I know we said that's you know going to be uh, drive through for phase three and a medical office for phase four. We actually don't have specific um, floor plans for that yet. All right, so here's the landscape plan. So all of the landscaping in the right of way and around the pond, that's going to be all done in phase one. And with the so with the existing tree line here and the proposed trees and the six foot wall, there should be enough screening between the development and the adjacent subdivision. I just wanted to point that out. Um, okay, so here is the floor plan for phase one, the gas station, the drive through. It's actually flipped from the site plan. So you have to rotate it. Um, so the restaurant will be on the east side of the gas station. The drive-through lane is going to come around here through the back of the gas station and the drive in the restaurant and come towards on the east side right here. All right. The, here are the elevations for that. Here's the, this is the, right here, this is the gas station and here's the drive-through. All right, and this is the west elevation and north elevation. This is the front. And here's a view of either east side, that's where the drive through window is, and the south side, the back. All right, where are we? And then here's the retail spaces. Here's the six spaces. Um, they're pretty similarly sized. And here's the, this is, north elevation, east, west, and south. Here's the front. And they actually have, the two facades are going to be compatible with each other. They're look, going to look pretty similar. Um, yeah, so that's all I have for now. Do you have someone else to say, Bill, added this? Uh, only that when you refer to the gas station, that's also the Buscemi's. Yes, sorry. Yes, correct. <laughs> All right. So if the Planning Commission had any questions uh, between uh, Fadi and Josh, myself, we should be able to answer them for you. Mr. Chairman, this is uh, Member Shuto. Have all parcels been combined already, Mr. Thompson? The combination is, uh, will occur after site plan approval. It's been submitted okay. and approved pending site plan approval. Okay, one other question. Will there be any screening around the drive through I'm not sure how close it is to residential, but I think we had another uh, petitioner on another project said they could put some screenings and sound deafening or sound deadening uh, material around the drive through so it wouldn't echo to the residents. Like I said, I can't tell how close the drive through would be in the gas station or your next retail building. I just wonder if there's any plans for that. Okay, your ordinance requires 300 foot separation between residentially zoned property and the drive through speakers. Um, we had that reduced to 150 feet because to our south and west, there's nothing but floodplain for 250 feet. The nearest residents are about 250 feet away from our property line. Uh, we're planning and we're required to put up a screen wall and landscaping in addition to the separation. So there's really about 400 foot of separation the ordinance only requires 300. But we Thank, you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Thompson. I have no further questions, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Shudo. Anyone else? Mr. Chairman, this is Commissioner Tuckfield. Commissioner um, Tuckfield, go ahead, sir. This might, this might be a better question to Mr. Box, but uh, it, depending on the answer, I did have some questions. Um, Mr. Box, I, I believe that, that, that the ordinance requires a special land use uh, for any drive-throughs, and if I'm reading this, correctly between the different phases 
Um, there's uh, three drive throughs um, Are they only looking for a special land use to approve one of them today? Is this blanket for the parcel combination or how are we looking at that? Uh, yeah, so that's a good question. I, uh, Dave Skirto might be able to weigh in a little bit as well, but I believe today we are only looking for a special land use for phase one and phase two uh, due to the fact that the parcels are not combined uh, for phase three for that. There's, there will be a total of two drive throughs not three, uh, one in phase one and another in phase three if approved. Uh, but I believe today we are only looking at phase one and phase two due to the conflict of the, the parcels being combined uh, with a, a resident still living in the, the home on the property of what will be phase three. But Dave, I don't know if you have anything yeah. to... Can, can you hear me? Am I on? Yes, yep. Can yeah, you go ahead, Mr. Today, Shooter, Mr. Only the special land use will only be for the drive-through that's adjacent to the gas station of the Bushimis. Any future okay. drive-throughs will have to apply again. It will be a whole nother case. Okay, so, and I guess a couple of, of subsequent questions off of that, just to make sure my reading in the drawing is correct. Um, and that is that the area, uh, the south side of phase two and, and Mr. Thompson um, or, or your associate there, you might be able to answer this as well. Is that a loading area only that I'm seeing below the building? I think it says loading area, but I'm not sure that my, my magnification on this is correct. Is that loading only or is that stacking for a drive-through there? The loading areas are separate from the drive-through. But correct, but the area to the south of building two, is that a loading area only or is that also, is that a drive through I can see the drive through behind building one and I can see the drive through behind building three. There is uh, a, so you got the stacking and I just wanna make sure that, that that area below building two is, is, a, is a loading area only. It's loading only, there is no drive through on building two. Okay, very good. Um, and then Mr. S Mr. Skirto, I guess prob probably back to you. So. So when we give this special land use, is, it, is this similar to a variance in that it runs with the land and we're granting the use of a drive-through or is it specific to the drive-through shown in the plans or how does that work and, and how does it work when we come if they're combining uh, uh, the parcels, wouldn't it extend to the new one? I'm just, I, I want to make sure I understand it correctly. The special land use does not run with the land, it runs with the business. Okay. This runs with the land. Uh, you're approving the drive-through for whatever use goes in with that specific building right now. Okay. So is it is it is it as drawn or is it for this business? As drawn. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, I think that was all I had. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Anyone else? Mr. Yes, Mr. Yeah, Chairman. Mr. Mr. Oliver, did you just uh, say something, sir? Uh, either me or Bentley. Mr. Bentley, do you want to talk? Go ahead. Uh, I do. Um, I have uh, just a couple of questions uh, regarding the parking, uh, required parking for phase one. Does that include the area just west of phase four? Yes. So uh, that parking is required for this facility then? Yes. And the other question is there was some concern um, on some of the reviews regarding the, um, the pedestrian traffic uh, related to the uh, drive-through uh, on phase one and uh, also uh, between phase one and phase two. And uh, I noticed that uh, if that drive-through is where it's, you know, is gonna stay where it's at, there really is a, a congested area to get around the, uh, the uh, uh, gas, uh, gas pumps under the canopy. Um, you've got people going around the facility. Um, I'm not sure why that traffic is going around, maybe to go on to Card Road, but maybe it's to turn back up uh, to the north. And then we have, uh, we have uh, cross traffic uh, going both directions, trying to get around that canopy, maybe turning into uh, or uh, south of the canopy. But uh, uh, that to me is a, a bit of a, a congestion, um, and I'm not sure how busy it's going to be, but uh, with 
with gas stations uh, and you have lines of people trying to get their gas uh, in some of the locations around here, uh, that would, to me, be problematic. Any, any, um, any comment? Not really. We've done everything we can to separate the pedestrian traffic from the vehicular traffic. Um, the drive through for the restaurant, they, they want the exposure on the east side of the building and the, the exposure from 23 Mile Road and Hard Road. Uh, the gas pumps need to be along 23. And yes. It's the way it's worked out. I, I would agree with the, uh, the um, requirements. Um, it would appear, though, that maximizing the pumps, um, you know, tends to uh, create the problem. The two, uh, the two spots uh, on the east end seem to be the, the thing that makes it, uh, um, makes it congested. Uh, the, uh, the traffic can't go straight through. They have to merge into another two lanes. Um, and if that's uh, the economies of it, they have to have so many different uh, pumps to make this successful. Um, that's, that's my concern. Uh, that seems to be the pinch point that, uh, that worries me. The, the driving lane parallel to car road is basically set up for the refueling trucks. You really can't see other people using that with any regularity. That's a drive lane next to Card Road, you said? Well, you've got, you've got the drive through, <clears throat> excuse me, you've got the drive through window, you've got two 10 foot lanes, then you've got a lane, an, another driveway, and that's set up pretty much for the oil takers to come in and, and, uh, and discharge the fuel. So, so where would the um, tanks be that they're filling? Back in that corner, northeast corner. Okay, so the drive through um, at the restaurant uh, coming out of there, they would have to get by a truck that's parked there uh, um, filling the tank, the underground tanks. Is that correct? Well, they do their best to get those the tanker the tanker scheduled uh, for the slowest time of the day and night. But the people coming from the drive through can also turn left and pass in front of Bushemi's and pull out onto 23 or loop back around and go to Card Road. I don't know if you have that readily available, but you had some uh, turning studies uh, for, the, um, for the trucks and they seem to have passed, they go between the canopy and the gas station. Uh, I didn't see them turning um, or going to that particular area for filling. Um, so that, that would make it even more of a pinch point, I guess. And, and maybe scheduling is the answer. Um, uh, I, I just didn't see that in the traffic, uh, not traffic study, but the, uh, the uh, turn um, study. I don't have that available with me right now. Okay, thank you. That's all, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Oliver? Yeah, uh, to the petitioner, has the Macomb County Road Commission reviewed this yet? The Macomb County Road Commission has a copy of this plan, but they said they won't react to it until it's received planning commission approval. Okay, my only concerns is the, the two entrances exit right there is, is close to that uh, intersection. And I'm just concerned about cars coming in, trying to make that, and cars leaving, trying to make a left-hand turn, uh, going westbound on, um, on uh, 23 Mile Road. Uh, I'm assuming that the Road Commission is going to play part of this if, if this goes forward. Is that correct? Correct. All right. Uh, my other question is, Again, the petitioner, you said that uh, there's possibly a medical building, or is that? This, that's just right now, mm -hmm. it's an office building of some sort. Okay, all right. And uh, 
to Mr. Uh, uh, Bach. Again, if they need um, special land use on anything else, they will still have to come to the Planning Commission? That's correct. We would, this uh, agenda item we're talking about right now is for the special land use for the drive-through, which is in phase one. Okay, that would be the Bushimis and the restaurant and the gas station. Correct. Okay. All right, one more question to the petitioner. Uh, does your property does encompass the McBride drain? Excuse me? Your property definitely goes over to the McBride drain? Yes. Will, uh, will you re be responsible for the, for the bridge? when they wide 23 or with a county? Five times as much. I believe the county's got the bridge on 23 mile road. The, the pedestrian pathway over, over the McBride drain. That yeah. will be their responsibility? I think it's, a, it's the road commission responsibility to get the culvert in. The, like the pathway itself would be the responsibility of the developer. Now on Cardo, it's my understanding that uh, the extension of the culvert or one quarter of the cost of the extension of the culvert and the pathway are all the responsibility of this developer. Okay, all right. I do have a question. Um, he's proposing outside displays of you got an ice chest uh firewood and stuff like that is, is that handled at this, at this point or is this handled during the site plan i think that's more of a site plan discussion okay where would those be uh uh bill they're showing around the uh, the Bushamis. The ice chest, I think, is west of the doors. Uh, there's uh, the gas cylinders and firewood uh, located along the west side of the building, I think. And there's there's one other item. I, I can't read the screen, so I don't know what it was. It's on the north side. Try zooming in. <laughs> this help? <laughs> no, mine's too small. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You know yeah, what it is, see, Josh? Yeah, so in the west side, you can see propane and firewood. And then on the north side, you can see ice chests and washer fluid. It's kind of, yeah, in that northwest corner. Are those displays contained or are they just stacked, like the wood just stacked on the uh, sidewalk? They're contained to a certain extent, but they're free for people to pick up and pay for. It's not like they're locked like the ice chest. Thank you. Hey, this is Mr. Scott. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. I just want to uh, make note what the ordinance requires is there remains a five foot clear space for that sidewalk. That five foot's also it can't be part of the overhang of cars and it can't be where the display is. So you're gonna have a display, you're gonna to have to keep five feet open. And then I believe the parking spaces are shown at 18 feet there. So they're gonna account for a two foot overhang of the curb. Correct, we went around this on this quite a few times with the, uh, with the engineer. And yeah. we have like it's over nine foot for the sidewalk. Yeah. You have to make allowances for the display areas and the overhang and a five foot walk. Mr. Chairman, this is Commissioner Tuckfield. Go ahead, Mr. Tuckfield. Mr. Chairman, this is more of a general comment. On, maybe Mr. Skirto and Mr. Box can chime into this. I mean, we're, we have, we do have some uh, conversation here that may be separate from the, the drive-through that pertains to the site plan, but I'm still thinking about this drive-through. Um, the drive-through, I don't have a problem with in principle. This is the second time I've seen it, although it's been a minute since the last time I saw it at ZBA for the variance that they referenced earlier. But when I look at this parcel, I don't have a problem with the use in this location. I mean, it's on 23 mile. We all know what 23 miles doing. It's separated um, by the drain, which is great. But as far as the special land use goes, the thing that worries me the most 
is a repetition of the corner of 23 and Romeo Plank. Um, I don't know how many of you guys are familiar with it. I, I assume most of you are, but, but there's a fast food restaurant on the, on the Southwest uh, quadrant. There's a gas station there. It's not the exact same layout, but the, the having a gas station and a, and a fast food element on the South uh, west corner of a busy intersection kind of it it, it reminds me of the two and, and in that particular case I don't know when that 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 fast food use was approved um, and, and maybe the road was different when it's approved but I know now that it's it's a relatively hazardous corner so I don't know if this is appropriate to the to the drive-through because I think um, on the site itself I don't mind the way the flow is per se. There's some there's some things as, as Mr. Bentley has mentioned and Mr. Skirto has mentioned as far as flow, uh, but I think the site itself seems to contain it. My concern is more with how it's going to interface with the traffic along 23. And I, I don't know what portion of that is appropriate for us to address. I don't know that I've, I've run into a situation where it seems so similar to an area that we've had issues with before. And well, I don't have a problem with the use. I also don't wanna see the same uh, concern that I see at, at, at 23 and Romeo Plank, where on a regular basis, if you stand at that intersection and look at the, fa the fast food use there, you don't have to stand there long for a potential accident to occur uh, because you have people who are driving westbound uh, they cross into the left-hand turn lane for eastbound to try to get into the fast food use and, and enter that driveway. So I, I guess that's my concern with this, not the site itself. I don't know if it's appropriate to address it here. I don't know if that's something that the road commission will address specifically or incidentally. I know if they addressed it at 23 and Romeo Plank, I don't think it was uh, uh, particularly effective. Um, and I don't know if we have the flexibility to maybe move things around and avoid that. But I guess... It's my concern, and I would also ask Mr. Box and Mr. Skirtle if that's something that, that you guys have had discussion with, if you feel that this will be a different case or, or be an easier case, and just, I guess, what, what you're thinking with that. If I could add to that, Mr. Tuckfield, uh, one of the things that, that that intersection is so nasty, and believe me, I drive through it all the time. Mm -hmm. The fact that it narrows from five lanes to two lanes. When that is, when 23 mile was completed, you're not going to have the traffic backups you have now. You have some traffic, that, and that may be true. But we we may I and you may know the the progression of the of the expansion through there as well. But even if it's for a short period of time, couldn't we have that same issue there? It would be the reverse. Right right now, the tra the traffic is you got two lanes to the left hand turn lane. You got you know one go lane going each way. And the left hand turn lane. It's already neck down when it gets started to, uh, to, uh, uh, to, to card road. Um, so, so your, your feeling at the 23 and Romeo Plank issue is because of cars narrowing down going eastbound or cars coming out of the choke, choke point going westbound? I think it's cars going eastbound backing up traffic. Backing up traffic which makes it so that the cars going westbound don't have the ability to, to turn in on a regular basis. Yeah. Also, uh, there's no way to get to the fast food off of Romeo Plank outside of going down 23. In this instance, you can make a left-hand turn on card and pull and in through the back. Pull through. in through the back driveway. Yes. yes. Any any thoughts on this, Mr. Skirdo or Mr. Box? This is Josh. I'll defer to Dave on this. He's looked at this development a lot more than I have, uh, as this largely predates me. So. Yeah, you know, all these traffic issues that we bring up were a concern. We worked with Mr. Thompson all the way. Mr. Van Tiflin was part of the whole issue. We relied heavily on his engineering experience combined with Mr. Thompson's for this. Um, to simply say that we're going to portion, I mean, it's just trying to figure out who do you apportion all the traffic to? Is it a drive through? Because we're talking about a drive through, or is it a combination of the drive through? The gas pumps and all the other uses. And that's a difficult mm -hmm. uh, conclusion to draw. Um, at this point, we just relied on the engineers, and uh, it appears that Mr. Van Tiflin, he wrote a review, was okay with everything, and he has a better insight on in what uh, Macomb County Road Commission is going to be doing in the future. I know it sounds like I'm kind of circling a little bit, but I really don't have- No, I, no I, I mean, here, I, I, don't, I, I don't want you to give an answer you don't have. And it's, I, obviously it's, it's, it's a, 
more subjective maybe than other things that we look at. Um, um, and I guess, uh, is, is that something we should be discussing at this point? I mean, it's not, it's not necessarily, um, it's not necessarily the interior of the site that would potentially cause this issue. It's the exterior of the site uh, feeding into the interior. If you're talking about the, even Mr. Skirto, again, if you're talking about the exterior of the site, that gets beyond the planning commission's authority. Okay, be that's, that's part of what I was asking, so. Okay. Um, okay, very good. Then all I would say is just as a general comment, I have no problem with the fast food on the site. We've looked at it before. Um, I hope you guys are really careful. And, and Mr. Thompson, I know you're local to the township. I know you drive through here, so I know you know what I'm talking about. But every time I drive through that intersection, I, I stop at the, the fast food restaurant in question relatively often. Um, I take great pains not to turn left there, and, and it's a dangerous thing. So just please, uh, if this goes through, make sure you're very cognizant of it and do whatever you can to, to make sure it's a safe intersection. We'll do our best. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That's all I had. Thank you, Mr. Tuckfield. Does anyone else on the uh, Planning Commission have anything they'd all like to share before I turn it over to the public? Or do I need to turn it over to the public, Mr. Box? Yes. Yes. Yes, we do. Mr. Chairman, I have one more question to Mr. Thompson. Go ahead, Mr. Shudo. Mr. Thompson, we're talking outside the plate displays. I think we're talking about seasonal, like in the summer, maybe water, in the winter, maybe antifreeze. We're not talking about putting like an, an ATM, permanent ATM or a red box or things like that outside of those gas stations, are we? That's the question. It has not been discussed at all. I don't think so. Okay, because if, if, if it's temporary displays, I think that, that I'd be fine with it. But if we're going to put like an outside ATM, if we're going to put a red box, you know, for video exchange and stuff like that, then then I would have a question, you know, what you're going to do on the outside. But if it's like a seasonal for water and things like that that can be moved, maybe in winter, the you know, the windshield washer fluid and, and, and so on and so forth like that. I was just wondering what the petitioner's thoughts were on like that. If it was a permanent display or if it's just going to be something that can be moved seasonally. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Shudo. At this time, I'd like to go ahead and open it to the public. Ryan, is there anyone else? Is there anyone online to uh, speak tonight on this issue? If uh, the public wishes to speak, please raise your hand digitally using star nine on your phone or uh, in the app itself. And I can call on you. I'm not seeing anyone. Okay, and we will close the uh, public portion for this. And commissioners, do I have a motion? Mr. Chairman, if there's uh, no other comments or questions, um, I'd like to make a motion on this. If you give me a second, I'm scrolling back up to make sure I have the correct, uh, I have the correct parcel ID. Um, <laughs> And, and also, go ahead, sorry. Yeah, can I step in real quick? There's actually two motions needed right now. We okay. need a motion to close the public hearing. Then we make the motion on the uh, special land use. Thank you, there Mr. Skirdo. Um, again, a motion to close public hearing. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to close the public hearing. Okay, motion made. Please uh, state a date, a uh, time. Uh, uh, the time would be... Um, I believe 7.43 p.m. Correct. On August 18th. Correct. I'll second that motion. Okay, motion made by Mr. Tuckfield, supported by Mr. Shudo. Mr. Bentley, call the roll, please. Mr. Bentley. I'm sorry, Mr. Tuckfield. Yes. Mr. Shudo. Yes. Mr. Oliver. Yes. Mr. Bentley, yes. Mr. Hardy. Yes. Now, do we have a motion on uh, the Hold special it. land use at 23 and Mr. Mr. Provisano. Yes. Oh, sorry, Mr. Bentley, I jumped you. Sorry. <laughs> okay, all eyes. Okay. Mr. Tuckfield, were you gonna make a motion? 
on this side. Yeah, I do, I do just want to verify uh, two things. One, the, the special land use motion, if we make one to approve, would definitely be different than the site plan. Just want to verify that was the case, uh, number one. And number two, um, Mr. Box, Mr. Skirto, uh, the special land use is an approval, not a recommendation, correct? They are separate, um, separate approvals. And I believe, yes, it's a, an approval, uh, not a recommendation. Okay, very good. Just, wanna, just wanted to make sure I had that correct. Uh, that being said, Mr. Chairman, I would like to make a motion to, to grant approval of the special land use for the permanent parcels 0822 and 0822200015. The special land use is pursuant to uh, allowing a drive through on building one as per the plans attached to the uh, planning commission packet. This will be based on the recommendations of the department heads, the fact that it fits in with the zoning district and with the surrounding uh, developments and land use. Okay, we have a second. Supported by Oliver. Supported by Mr. Oliver. Mr. Bentley, call the roll. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Mr. Tuckfield. Yes. Mr. Oliver. Yes. Mr. Shuto. Yes. Mr. Bentley, yes. Mr. Hardy. Yes. And Mr. Provisano. Yes. All eyes. Mo motion passed. Thank you very much. All right, we're moving on to site plan 23 and card development, the same thing. Uh, permanent parcels 082200500520022000014 located on the southwest corner of 23 mile and card section 22. Mr. Box or Mr. Skirtle. So uh, as you mentioned, this is the same uh, site plan that we've just been discussing. I think a lot of uh, site plan comments have already actually been had. Um, one, uh, well, a couple things uh, to point out again, we're talking about phase one and phase two. Um, if you look at your screen, you can see phase three and four are kind of grayed out. Uh, that again is because we're talking about phase one and phase two tonight. That is the, the site plan that we're uh, talking about and that they are seeking approval for. Uh, and one other thing to note, uh, as mentioned by Mr. Van Tiflin to me earlier today, uh, the site plan does show uh, the pathway along 23 mile. Um, there's future construction programmed for 23 mile. The pathway will be built uh, in conjunction with the 23 mile construction, not this development. So just keep that in mind. Okay, thank you, sir. Comments from commissioners? All right, at this time, I'd like to open it to the public. Brian? Okay. Again, if anyone wishes to speak, please raise your hand digitally and I'll call on you. That'd be star nine on your phone or using the app. Nothing at this time. Okay, thanks, Ryan. Uh, motion to close the public portion of this item. Mr. Chairman, this is Member Shudo. I'd like to make a motion to close, close the public hearing at 7.49 p.m. Or been supported by Mr. Provenzano. Mr. Bentley, call the roll, please. Yes. <clears throat> Mr. Uh, Mr. Hardy. Here, yes. Um, Mr. Mr. Provenzano. Yes. Uh, Mr. Tuckfield. Yes. Mr. Shuto. Yes. Mr. Oliver. Yeah. And Mr. Bentley, yes. Okay. Just for the record, that was Mr. Shudo that made the motion and Mr. Provenzano seconded it. Okay. Thank you. I missed that. That's okay. Now, do we have a 
um, motion for the site plan at 23 and Carr. Mr. Chairman, if I could uh, just jump in briefly. I had a question if we could for the motion, if that's possible. Okay, go ahead. Uh, go ahead, Mr. Just Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, to Mr. Skirto, in, in, in your review, you noted the pedestrian pathway between buildings one and two, um, yes. possibly another pathway. I'm, I'm not sure if you're referring to both or one or if there's an additional pathway. Um, uh, are you comfortable with the drawing or those, are those current notes? What's, uh, what's your current thoughts on that? Uh, yes, we had the applicant looking at pedestrians getting them across that busy two-way uh, they did have gone through and matched up the uh, drives to our satisfaction. So that yeah. that com that comment has been a or sorry, go ahead. Yeah, the, I, mean, I didn't mean drives. I mean the pedestrian connections across. They they've gotten it close enough. To, uh, we're okay with that. Okay, so so the the drawing that I have in my packet is not necessarily the one that you made that that specific comments on. The one we have, it, 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 um, it you're yeah. comfortable with and you're good with with approving. Yeah, we're good. We still have a register some concern about getting pedestrians across that two-way but they seem to be as close as they're going to get with the with the connections so was your concern and just so i can understand i can see that it looks like the ones to the west are tipped down at an angle and, and a lot further uh, uh north than the ones on the east side of that was that your concern was how far they were apart from each other and having to walk so long with traffic so to speak yes it was part of it um but but I don't I, we, there's really no solution for it. They meet code. It mm -hmm. was a concern that we had. Okay, and and did you have do you have any concerns with that that back park parking lot portion that I believe Mr. Bentley referred to the the little uh, notch if you will yeah. uh, to the west of Phase Four? Yeah, that, that's always been a concern because of a pedestrian having to cross a two way and then a drive through lane to get to yeah. the headwalk to get to the building. Yeah, and that and that parking is required for the overall use or the front use, or do you have any any? It's, it's I mean, it looks like it's required for the front use. It's required for phase one, where the Bushi Music Gas Station is. I can't imagine people use. I mean, it's it's located on the site, obviously, it's parking, but it seems pretty. Uh, um, does not seem particularly useful in its location for the for the site, obviously. Yes. Um, and Mr. Thompson, you didn't have any other mitigating, uh, any other mitigating things to help fix that? Because uh, I'm, I'm sure you've, you've, you've been through these things. You can see the concern that's had here with, and, and Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Bentley mentioned this as well. You didn't have anything else you might be able to do to mitigate this? Well, that area is going to be designated employee parking for Bushemis. So you, you, you would expect a low transient uh, uh, traffic flow there. Correct. <clears throat> okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That was all I had. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Tuckfield. Do we have a motion? Oh, Mr. Anyone? Chairman. Go ahead. Mr. Chairman, one, one, one other question uh, for that. Is this Mr. Bentley? Mr. This Bentley, Mr. go ahead. This is Mr. Bentley. Um, so the same uh, employee parking lot um, adjacent to phase four, um, are they, are all of those spots, parking spots, will that be difficult to get out of um, uh, that lot without a little bit of a turn um, to, uh, to back out of uh, and then pull forward? is one question. The other question is, in phase four, if that ever went forward, is there sufficient parking uh, for a medical office building or anything of that size? Uh, does the, the parking spaces meet the uh, either occupancy, the square footage of the building? That last answer, <clears throat> excuse me, the last answer would be, will be dependent on the building. Uh, the building is going to have to fit the parking that's available for it. Uh, I'm not sure you're going to have any medical in there because there's no extra parking spaces. Thank you. And then, and then uh, getting out of the parking lot uh, behind phase four on the west side? There shouldn't be any problem. Okay. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That's all I had. Thank you, Mr. Bentley. All right. Did we open this to the public? We did that already. Are we looking for a motion now? That's what we're looking for is a motion. Anyone? Mr. Chairman, this is Commissioner Tuckfield. Go ahead, Mr. Tuckfield. Uh, I would like to um, make a motion on this item for the permanent parcel 0822200005, 0822200014, and 0822200015. Um, and that would be to recommend approval of the site plan uh, for those parcels that was given, uh, shown to us this evening. Um, and this based on the recommendations from the uh, department heads uh, and also that it seems to match our uh, requirements uh, and fits in with the area. Second. Motion made by Mr. Tuckfield, seconded by Mr. Provenzano. Mr. Bentley, please call the roll. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Tuckfield. Yes. Mr. Provisano. Yes. Mr. Schuto. Yes. Mr. Oliver. Yes. Mr. Uh, Bentley. Yes. And Mr. Hardy. Yes. Motion passes. Next item on our list is the preliminary plan for Penzine Estates. Permanent parcel 08082000009, located on the south side of 25 Mile Road, east of Romeo Plank, section eight. Roberto Vitelli, petitioner. Mr. Fox. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So Penzian Estates, you might remember, was before you uh, very recently, uh, and it was tabled or postponed uh, until today so we could have some further discussions. It is a residential development south of 25 Mile, uh, west of the Penzian Farms uh, subdivision. It is a relatively small residential development uh, as compared to most within the township, only 14 units. Two of the units will front on 25 Mile, while 12 others connect through Biscayne Drive, uh, which does go through Penzian Farms. Uh, some of the discussion that we had previously was to, uh, concerns of traffic driving through Penzian Farms. Uh, in subsequent uh, conversation, uh, the developer has agreed that uh, the construction plans uh, would be updated to create a construction drive um, on the east side of the property where it meets 25 mile uh, to, to keep the construction traffic off of any of the roadways within Penzi and Farms. Uh, and, and therefore they would develop the, the units um, through that construction uh, driveway um, until they get to the final unit um, on 25 mile. Um, we did sp speak with uh, Macomb Department of Roads uh, and, and they did kind of confirm the, the roadway issues and concerns uh, with another connection out on 25 mile uh, and other roadways that exist. We looked at some other alternative connections uh, on some of the adjacent properties to see if there was a way to, to get it out there. Um, at this time, all departments have reviewed and are recommending approval. Okay, thank you, Mr. Box. Commissioners. Mr. Chairman, this Mr. is Commissioner Tuckfield. Go ahead, Mr. Tuckfield. Question to Mr. Box. So this drawing, uh, if, I, if I understand it right, and I don't have the last one that we saw uh, sitting next to it, but once the construction drive is used and the, the second parcel fronting 25 mile is built out, would this uh, subdivision layout look materially the same as the first one? Does it have the same number of lots? In other words, is the only addition the, the, um, the 
uh, synchronization of building and making sure that the construction road is there or was anything else changed? That That is largely the, the change is that the construction traffic would not go through Penzian Farms uh, and, and the lots, uh, let me see here, I believe it would be lot number five followed by lot one would be the last two to be built uh, as the construction traffic would go uh, on the eastern edge of the property. Uh, after uh, unit five is built, uh, the detention basin, I believe, would also need to be widened slightly uh, so that it can be finished and then unit one would be constructed. Okay. And, and to your understanding, what's the level of construction that they're expecting to take the balance of the lots before they start with, with lot five? Are, are we looking at, at uh, site work? Are they looking at uh, finished construction? Or what's the, what's the level that they expect to leave the construction drive in for? Mr. Tuckfield, if I may. Yeah. <clears throat> um, the road, the, the subdivision road going into the site will be blocked off entirely during all the underground and paving construction. And it will stay that way until there's an occupant in one of the houses. At that point, uh, it'll be opened up for individuals to travel in. All the construction for the houses, all the construction equipment for digging basements and delivering black and wood will all be directed over the road coming in on, it's actually on the western side of the site. Mm -hmm. There will be signs at the boulevard approach on, uh, for Penzine Farms, saying absolutely no construction traffic. There'll be a couple of them there. So that the people delivering will know that they're not supposed to go there. They'll be told that beforehand. Uh, there's only gonna be one builder in this site. That's gonna be Roberto Vitale. Uh, his primary business is building houses. And um, he'll have control over uh, the delivery of all this materials. Um, and if you, if you could, Mr. Thompson, and I, and I appreciate the description, um, do you know if Mr. Vitale plans to build these, uh, the market determines this to some extent, but is he planning on building these primarily at the same time or, or do you know how he expects to do that? No, he typically does one at a time. Okay. I mean, he's a custom builder. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, very good. And thank, thank you for the explanation and, and thank you, Mr. Box. Mr. Chairman, that's uh, all I have for the moment. Thank you, Mr. Tuckfield. Mr. Box or Mr. Skirto, is there any way that the community can see the screen that we're talking about, the plans that we've, we were um, talking about just now? Is there any way we can share that? Okay. Yeah, I just shared it right now. Bring it up. There you go. Yep. Okay. Can you explain to our community where the road or the construction road would be? So it's going to be on the west side right here. So this is where lot five was. And so it would come from 25 mile road down to where this side row is. And also it would, we would have to cut some of the detention pond as well. And then we would, you know, when that's done, we'd extend the detention pond a little more. Okay. Um, I know there was some question the last time we talked about changing the retention bond direction. I believe Mr. Oliver had a question about that. Was that considered at all or no? It was considered. It just, it doesn't function properly if you put it that way. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Any other commissioners with questions? Mr. Chairman. Yeah. There's a... Go ahead, Mr. Oliver. Yeah, one one quick question. So, if I understand it right, you you're leaving the road locked until the first house is occupied, and that's obviously for safety. Um, but as you're continue as your builders continuing to build the last eleven, they're still going to continue to use the construction road until sure. basically most of this stuff is done. And then the other lots will go in, the retention pond will be expanded, and then the 25 mile road lot will be built. Is that the way I understand it? That is correct. Okay. Very good, thank you. Okay, Mr. Bentley, I think you're up now. 
Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, one other question that was addressed is uh, the signage for this Penzine Estates uh, and where that was going to go. Um, uh, I think the discussion was it was going to be out on 25 Mile Road uh, at the two, uh, two residences that are out there, but yet no access to get to um, to uh, the Penzine Estates. So they would have to travel through um, the existing um, uh, subdivision, uh, which it was apparently designed for an extension. Um, so I don't have a problem there, but uh, it seemed to be a, a, an issue with some of the residents that uh, uh, on the public hearing as to you know how people are going to know where that subdivision is and how to get to it. Mr. Box. Okay, go ahead. Anyone want to comment on that, Mr. Bentley's question? Is Mr. Vitale, is Mr. Vitale in the audience? Hello, this is Roberto Vitale. How are you? Roberto, uh, you basically sell your homes off of models on different sites, correct? Correct, yes. So it's not necessary to have a model or have no, a model. what I'm actually doing, you know, once I have everything, I've already had multiple people interested in the, the location. So I have um, contact information. And soon as I get past the preliminary stages and get everything going, then I'm going to start reaching out to people. Um, hopefully before it actually opens, I will already have uh, multiple pre-sales and go from there. Mr. Chairman, I have a question. Go ahead, Mr. Bentley. Yes, uh, Mr. Vitale. Mr. Bentley, uh, Mr. Vitale had a question about the sign for the subdivision. Um, are you speaking about the construction sign or like a permanent sign? That I would believe be a, it was a permanent sign. Mr. Bentley, are you still there? Yes, that would be a permanent sign. That was one of the issues that had come up in the last uh, public hearing. So what I've done in the past on the projects like this that are like connected to another subdivision, and I can do one of two things. Uh, in the past, I've made a, a, a sign. So if you're looking at lot 14 in the subdivision, when you're coming in from Biscay Drive into the, the new houses, put a sign at the rear of one of the backyards, you know, off the easement, or put a sign on one of the lots off 25 mile for it, depending um, which, which uh, would work better. So as, as long as people know that Penzine Estates has no access off a 25 mile road directly onto the estates. Correct. Uh, they would be directed then to go through the adjacent subdivision? Yeah, well, I mean, you know, anybody living in the subdivision is already gonna know where it's at. If, uh, if someone was trying to locate it, you know, and they put in MapQuest and with the address, it's, 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 it will eventually take you right into Penzium Farm entrance right into the street. All right, uh, thank you for that answer. Um, uh, Mr. Chairman, I did have another question. Go ahead, Mr. Bentley. So there, uh, the statement was that um, the road um, would be blocked off to uh, the Penzine Estates um, at the property line and there would be, uh, I believe, uh, indications at every entrance into the um, uh, uh, into all of the subdivision entrances that indicate uh, there's no uh, you know traffic to Penzine Estates. Uh, my uh, my question is in response to uh, Mr. Thompson's re uh, uh, response that um, they will remain closed until there is an occupant on the uh, Penzine estate. So 
once an occupant is uh, is present in any one of these uh, homes, um, that road will become open. Um, I would assume, but there's nothing been said that construction would still continue to go through the uh, temporary construction access, even though it might be uh, it might be quite a while before any other homes are built. Um, uh, that that access would be open. Uh, it just um, uh, it was a concern of mine that you could have one uh, one home um, built, have it occupied, have the benzene open uh, open to that uh, occupant certainly, but uh, the rest of the site is open as well and. Uh, and could get construction traffic out into the adjacent uh, um, subdivision. Any any comment on that, or any controls that you would set in place uh, or limits? Well, first of all, for the construction entrance, I'm going to have a big sign out there stating, Penzian Estates, all construction entrance here. So this would be off of the 25 mile where I have the two lots on the construction entrance. And then I'm gonna make signage uh, to put at the front of the entrance. And, and then when a homeowner actually accesses that is living in the subdivision, put sign no construction into here, please use construction entrance. And that would be maintained for the duration? Correct, the construction entrance is gonna be maintained and we'll have signage out there also. All right, thank you. No problem. Mr. Hardy, this is Mr. Oliver. Mr. Oliver, go ahead, sir. Yeah, I, I just wanna make a comment. I, I think we have one thing, the community has one thing in favor in this situation with the issue of construction traffic, being that the owner, Mr. Vitale, is also the builder, and he will be the one controlling a lot of the products coming in and out of there. And uh, generally when that happens, uh, he, he will be able to, to actively get to the people, the trucks that shouldn't be going, into them constructions, into them subs, he will be able, uh, be able to contact the right people immediately and, and tell them, they look, I got a particular area to drive in, it's signed, and uh, he will be getting them people to use them. I'm pretty confident of that. Correct. Anybody that I, I sent to the project, which is trades or anyone, anyone will have will know that I'm telling them to use the construction entrance only. That is for the purpose of this development. Hey, Mr. Vitale, I don't want you to think I'm cheerleading for you, but um, I've seen it in these smaller projects where the owner like yourself is always there, is always on site. So if a resident comes up, uh, they could get to you immediately. A lot of times they'll say, hey, that's the, that's the owner right there. And these things can get solved really quick. Uh, and that, it's just been from experience I've seen this. Uh, no, so of course. thank you. Of course, thank you. All right, good job, Mr. Oliver. Any other questions or concerns from the commissioners? I have one to Mr. Vitale. Mr. Vitale, are you going to have your own homeowners association or be part of the Penzine Estates? So I've actually, I, I have actually been speaking with Bill, which is part of the HOA, and I told him once I get more information, we get past preliminary, then I was going to talk to him about seeing if we want to add this to the Penzine Farms, which makes sense because it's all part of one project. Um, but, you know, I told them that would be next steps once we get a few preliminary things out of the way. So would they be private roads until you get half developed or would it be part of Penzine and become county roads? 
There will be county roads. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shudo. All right, if there are no other comments, I would like to open it up to the public. And I know we have some on the chat on chat here, but let's start with um, the folks that are online. Ryan? Yep, uh, Joseph Kosika, go ahead. Okay. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Ken, please take your full name, Joe, and your address, please. Joe Kosika, 17761 Huron Drive, and the uh, Penzian Farms Estates, and I'm on the board with Bill as well. And um, as far as the signs, if any of you have driven by our subdivision, we do have signs, very large entrenched signs facing both eastbound and northbound, uh, westbound on um, Romeo Plank. So I'm not sure where the um, 25 mile road, I'm not sure where the signs would go, um, but, but even so, is, is a sign required uh, for this subdivision? Is that a requirement from the township that every subdivision had their own sign? Okay, we're going to save all the questions and we'll answer them all together okay. at the end. But that's a valid point and I appreciate that. Uh, Ryan, okay. is there anyone else online that would like to speak? Yes, we have a uh, William Smith. Go ahead. Okay. Mr. Smith, please state your name and address, please. Uh, yeah, so William Smith, uh, 54297 Stillwater. Uh, I'm the bill that's been in contact with Roberto, um, also with the HOA. Uh, I appreciate the changes. Um, I'm sure the, uh, the residents in the sub that voiced their opinions last time will appreciate the changes uh, for the construction. Um, and like I said, well, I, I think everything looks great. Uh, looking forward to working with Roberto um, in the future and you know, we could possibly even figure out something with the signs and and whatnot for the entrances, and I think it'll be a good thing for the for the uh, for the neighborhood to to develop that property. And we, like I said, look forward to working with them um, in possibility of uh, joining our HOA. So uh, that's that's all I got. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Bill. Thanks. Ryan, is there anyone else that would like to speak? Uh, yes, we have a Trevor Baker. Go ahead. Mr. Baker, please state your name, address, please. Hi, uh, my name is Trevor Baker. I live at 17700 25 Mile Road. Um, I'm actually the first lot to the east of this development off of 25 Mile. I'm not a resident of Penzian Farm, so this development will pretty much uh, go completely around me. I'll be Penzian Farm and Penzian Estate will be on both sides of me now. Um, and I don't know if this is the right form to ask this question. I guess one of my biggest questions for this development is that there is a sidewalk to the east that runs in front of the houses on Penzian Farms on 25 Mile. And then there is my lot that does not have a, uh, a sidewalk. And then there's a sidewalk now that's gonna be going to the left or the, the west side of me with Penzian uh, Estate. So I guess I'm just kind of curious on what the development is with that and how that's gonna affect my property. Okay, thank you very much. Ryan, is there anyone else that would like to speak? Uh, we have Joe Kosika again. Go ahead, Mr. Kosika. Hey, yes, there's one other uh, item. There is a, uh, a border fence and trees that were part of Penzian Farms and the other property. And the trees are encroaching on the neighbors in Penzian Farms. And they, they belong to the Vitali property. So I was wondering if those would be what that fencing would look like or the separation between uh, both subdivisions, that fence to be removed, repaired, stone wall, and the trees removed. Okay, thank you, sir. I noted your question. Anyone else, Ryan? Uh, no, sir. Okay. Uh, either the petitioner, Mr. Box, or Mr. Skirto, the signage, is that necessary? Hello? Hi, yes, a, Mr. Skirto, and I, I don't have an answer for that right now. Okay. Yeah, I, I, same thing. I was actually actively trying to look that up uh, as, as you guys were talking. I think that they don't have to have a sign for each sub, but I'm not 100% sure of that. I will check into it. But I do think uh, we have a, a similar sub that uh, recently went through the ZBA. Mr. Tuckfield, you might remember this. 
uh, up in Wolverine. I think it's Wolverine Estates North. Uh, that also it does not have its own entrance. Um, you have to go through another neighborhood to get into this sub. And I don't think that sub had any sign, uh, but I will confirm whether they are required or not. Okay, thank you. And Mr. Kasika also had a question about the trees and the fencing. Does that go to the petitioner or is that something you want to talk about, Mr. Vox? That's a question for the petitioner. Mr. Vitale? Are you there? Uh, yes, what was that? Uh, the, Mr. Kasika had a question about the trees and the fencing, the lines, Penzine Farms, I believe. Now, uh, the trees in the back of the property, I mean, until I know exactly the development, most of the trees are gonna be um, having to come down depending on exactly where water and sewer and any of the underground has to come into place. Um, if there's something that is um, affecting a certain property that is not in the way of it, and it is actually affecting the property, well, then it will get removed also. Um, as of right now, from what I, my understanding is the, the fence that is put up is on the Penzium Farm homeowners' properties. If okay. Bill, if you could uh, That's correct. Interject. That's correct. And that fence would be their responsibility, and we would not remove it. If it's on their property, it stays there. And on, along the east line, we've moved the storm sewer away from the backyards of the Penzing uh, farm site to uh, give as much room as we can between the property line and the storm sewer. I think it's, I don't, it's typically would be between four and 10 and six feet. I think we've got it at four, at 12 feet from the property line. So if there are trees in that area that we can save, we'll, we'll do our best to save them. Okay, well, I think we've answered all the questions. Um, and I'm not sure, Mr. S uh, Box, about the sidewalk thing. I think that would be something yeah. other than what we're talking about here with the preliminary plan. Yeah, I, I will say, uh, just to do my best to answer that question, um, I think that would be uh, something that could be looked at with our gap closure program uh, that Mr. Van Tiflin is, is doing around the township. Uh, when that would fall into that schedule, I don't know, but those are the type of, of gaps that that program was designed for. Okay. And I want to just make sure this remote stuff is very hard sometimes. Ryan, is there anyone else that would like to sp speak? Not that I'm seeing. Okay. Then I need a motion to close the public hearing at 822 on 818. So moved, uh, this is Commissioner Bentley. Mr. Bentley made the motion, seconded. Seconded by Oliver. Seconded by Mr. Oliver. Mr. Bentley, call the roll. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Bentley, yes. Uh, Mr. Oliver? Yes. Mr. Provisano? Yes. Mr. Schuto? Yes. Mr. Hardy? Yes. Mr. Tuckfield? Yes. All motion right. passed. All right, do we have a motion for the preliminary plan for Penzine Estates? Mr. Chairman. Yes. Mr. Oliver. Yes, I move we approve uh, the preliminary plan for Penzines Estates, uh, permanent parcel 08080200009, located on the south side of 25 Mile Road. I'll second that. Member Motion. Motion by Mr. Oliver to approve the preliminary plan for Penzine Estates, seconded by Mr. Shudo. Mr. Bentley, please call the roll. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Oliver. Yes. Mr. Shuto. Yes. Mr. Tuckfield. Yes. Mr. Provisano. Yes. Mr. Bentley, yes. And Mr. Hardy. Yes. Motion passed. 
Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, we are now moving on to old business. And we're going to go to Mr. Box or yeah, Mr. Box. We're going to go to Mr. Box. Uh, thank you. Uh, I don't think we have any um, old business on the agenda. Okay. Then let's move to public comments on non-agenda items. Ryan, do we have anybody that would like to speak? Um, no, sir. Okay. And then, well, we don't have to do a motion then. Let's go to review of bylaws. Your box. Sure. So this uh, this was added to the agenda uh, by request from uh, Mr. Shudo uh, at the last meeting. Uh, I'm not sure specifically uh, what items within the bylaws you wanted to discuss, Mr. Shudo, um, but I do have them in front of me, and I you know, I've reviewed them the last couple of days. I'd be happy to discuss uh, anything that you wish to discuss with regards to the bylaws. Well, this is member Shudo. Basically, what I think we should do is review the bylaws every year, and if there's anything that we need to update, I thought we. I, I, what I was thinking is we should do that when we do an election of our officers. <laughs> it, I lost their whole screen. Uh, so all I could see was a, a big zoom, and then the little display came up. Sound, okay, sounds folks, like Mr. Thompson might be talking. talking. Please uh, mute your uh, mic, please. Mr. Thompson, I think we're hearing you. Please move, mute your mic. I think he's gone. Okay. Mr. Mr. Uh, Bach, on the first page of the, the uh, bylaws, Article 3C, are you going to prepare the, the annual report that uh, needs to be sent to the board from the Planning Commission? Yes, I will. Okay, because I don't think we've done that in the past. I didn't know if that'd be Mr. Bentley's responsibility or if you were going to handle that. That was one question I had. Yeah, I'll, I'll be happy to Mr. Bentley or, or any other commission members who wish to participate uh, in preparing that report. Okay, then yeah, the only other question I had is on page two, officers and commissioners. Can a, an elected official be a vice chairman of the Planning Commission or the ZBA or because I know they can't be the chairman of the of the Planning Commission. Can they be a vice chairman? So if the, if the chairman wasn't there, can a, an elected official be the vice chair and run a meeting? We do not have any no. I don't believe. So that was the rhetoric about maybe an Okay. Because I wasn't I wasn't sure how they ran because I know an elected official can't run or can't be elected to be the chairman of the of the planning commission. Mr. Skirt, am I correct with that? Uh, yes, yes. I'm elected official. I should check in the state law on that one to see if that pertains to all the uh, elected uh, positions. Right, it does. This is Thomas Sorty, it does. Okay. So should we add that to our uh, officers and the commissioners that no elected official can be the chairman or vice chairman of the planning commission or should we just leave it as it is, Tom? You don't have to, you don't have to change it because the state law prohibits it. Okay, thank you. Because I know when the ZBA, we had, before Aaron took over, we had an elected official who was running the ZBA. And as I said, I just want to make sure we don't have that conflict again. Correct. Okay. Yeah, and I was just, I was just going to add to that. This is this is Commissioner Tuckfield. We we did have some issues with that at ZBA. There was some, there was some uh, disagreements on 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 some of the technicalities with it. And obviously, Tom, I, I know we don't want to get into, to uh, to trying to to appear like we're overruling Michigan law. But does it hurt to mention it just just as per Michigan law? Da 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 da. That, you could certainly do that if you wanted to. I mean, it, 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 I don't, I don't know if you want us not to. Obviously, that would be a different thing. I just know that when it was brought up, it got brought up a couple of times before the change was made, and I, I, it, it's, I, I don't think it'll be an issue. Well, the people who are around now are, are still here, but it would be something for the future just to have written down. If you, if you don't think it is, I'd be fine with it. But I, just to support Mr. Shudo's point there. No, there, it would be certainly appropriate to include it. 
I, I was just answering it's not required, but it would make sense to put it in given what you just mentioned. Okay, very good. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shiro and Mr. Sorty. So Mr. Bach, could we add that to the bylaws? Yeah, I can I can draft up uh, any other changes as well uh, and circulate that for, for everyone's review. Um, do you think we should add something on how to run a Zoom meeting to the bylaws? So if Mr. Harding or this ever pandemic or something ever happens, that there would be, it would be in there for the vice chairman or someone to have a, uh, an outline to how to run it? We could certainly touch on, on that, but it, I mean, it's required, you know, the Open Meetings Act uh, it is mentioned on page three uh, that it has to be open to the public. Um, uh, typically that would be in person. We're doing it uh, remotely due to the governor's executive orders, um, but I, I don't think it would be, I don't think there would be anything wrong and Mr. Assorti can correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think there would be any issue if we did uh, include language that mentions that in certain circumstances, it would have to be, you know, via Zoom or other, other forms of virtual communication. Thank you. That's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Shudo. This is Tom and Sorty. I think we would want to stay away from those for right now, just because the governor has changed her executive orders so many times that we don't want to, that's not something that I think we want to put in a, in the bylaws. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Sorty. Thank you. And thank you, Mr. Sorty. And now let's move on to commissioner comments. Does anybody have any comments they'd like to share tonight? Yeah, I have one comment. I was at the new park off of uh 26 mile beautiful place that has a lot of potential and I'm going to direct this to our uh, board of trustees liaison when I got out there there's a walking trail and when I looked at it I wanted to walk the trail but I'm not sure how far that trail goes if it's one mile two miles three miles half mile so before I ventured out there and got halfway through the woods I was just hoping that our parks and rec director may be able to put up a sign to let people know that uh, how far the, the walking trail is and maybe we can get a little better signage out in front because it, I, when I drove by, I saw the Macomb Township sign, but I didn't see a park. So the, the, that's, that's the only comments I have. And you know, it's a beautiful park. It's an asset to our community. And I hope a lot of people get out there and enjoy the nature walk. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Shudo. Anyone else? Commissioner's comments? Mr. Chairman, this is uh, Member Tuckfield. Go ahead, Member Tuckfield. Uh, so I had a couple of comments. The first one would be to echo uh, Mr. Shudo. I drove out uh, to that uh, uh, new property as well. Um, I was uh, I was a little uh, a little bold, I guess. I wasn't sure how long the path was either. Although I did end up walking it. Uh, it is beautiful, um, as as one might expect as you drive on the, the property. It has definitely a rustic feel at the moment, but uh, it was a, it was a pleasant uh, walk. Um, and, and I enjoyed it. Looking forward to seeing um, how we uh, how we end up developing that uh, and, and adding uh, adding uh, parklands to our uh, to our community. Um, my other comments or question, I guess um, I, I guess I would just ask Mr. Um, Sorty if there's any update on um, how meetings are being held. Um, obviously, it's changing landscape as as you mentioned and. And who knows how long things are going to go on? But do you have any clarity on, on how um, how meetings are being looked at from the from from the state government and any changes that might be happening in the near future? Well, there is a new executive order in place, but it basically says the same thing as far as open meetings and compliance and, and, and conduct them versus Zoom. The other issue that you have is the open meetings, and I think we talked about this previously. You can do an open meetings, but you can't gather more than 10 people. So um, that's, you know, you've got multiple things going on. Virtually right now in Southeast Michigan, it would be almost impossible to conduct a, a meeting in person. I know some communities are trying it, the smaller communities, but a community of our size is just not gonna work. Is there any, is there any, um... I hesitate to say data or metrics because I think 
<laughs> we're, we're all hearing those terms right now, maybe getting a little glazed over looking there, at least I know I am. But is there any point that, that you would expect any of the phases that are, are laid out in the governor's plan where you think it might be to re be reasonable to, to say we might be able to start toward that? Is there is there a known point where that might happen? Uh, no, in fact, we, we, we had a discussion on that today at, at town hall and um, we were quite honestly expecting some sort of standards at least. If we weren't, if we weren't at least moved, we'd expect some sort of standards. We don't have mm -hmm. those either. And right now we're basically just at, you know, as the governor decides by executive order. So is it is it fair to assume that we're in this mode for this foreseeable future? We're anticipating that this is going to go on for, well, right now at Town Hall, we're anticipating that it's going to go on for several months now. Okay. All right. Very good. I think that, that's mostly mostly my questions on it, I, and it's probably not the best time to talk about it. I just I would I would encourage the rest of the board and, and hopefully our planning department. You know, if if we're dealing with this through the end of the year and, and into you know potentially even into the following year, who knows how long this is going to go? It sounds like uh, from what Mr. Assorti says, there we're not necessarily ruling that out. Um, just thoughts about how we can make sure that we stay as interactive with the public and with the petitioners as possible. Um, I think the Zoom meetings have, have gone well for what they are so far, um, but um, I, don't, I don't think it can be a Band-Aid fix, which to some extent is what it's had to be so far as we've been having to, to move with it and apply. And just thinking about some of the you know, items coming up that hopefully we can work through. You know, um, hopefully Mr. Skirtle will have some master plan um, discussions for us to have, maybe discussions with the public. Um, we may have to get creative with how we do those conversations. And, and uh, you know, we have a little bit of leeway now, but if this goes on for a long time, we, we, we may have to get uh, creative in how we handle that. Because I think we need to be able to interact uh, perhaps more than we're able to do at the moment. Uh, so that would be my only uh, comment on that. And then just lastly, I just wanted to check in with Mr. Uh, Skirto. Uh, and Mr. Box, as with regards to the master plan update, um, obviously there's a lot of legwork to be done. Um, I know we've talked about maybe uh, doing some some different committees uh, with regards to it. Do you have any update on that? Is there any any specific homework that we can be working on? Do you have any idea on when we'll be doing things a little bit more formally? Any sort of update in that regard? Yeah, Josh, you want me to take this? Sure. Yeah, uh, where we're at is we've got all the um, background studies done. We're organizing those right now. Actually, to tell you the truth, as soon as we get off this meeting, I got to go edit a bunch of maps. So we're okay. going to be bringing uh, we're going to be bringing that to you. We're also working closely on trying to how to get the public integrated. And we're looking at a uh, a model that that our company used in another city, where they use a series of Zoom meetings, uh, all based on a sub uh, subject matter then we would have mm -hmm. expert panelists step in and they could present 10 minute presentations and we'd open up to public questions that seems mm -hmm. to be successful we already got com yeah. we already got a commitments uh from macomb county to sit in as panelists for the trails and what they're doing there uh, mr van tiflin has agreed to sit in as a panelist to handle the road sidewalks utilities uh Zoom, uh, Zoom topic. And then and we have a number of other folks trying to nail down times and presentation materials right now. But you can expect uh, the background report to be to you in September. And what sort of time frame do you think it would be for some of those other discussions? Are, were you, would you be looking at late September, early October? What do no, you, I I'm mean, obviously it's up there. That. I'm trying to get a lot okay. earlier than that. Again, we're trying to go through the logistics of it right now, but we've got it set up on the topics we want, and now we're just trying to nail down, um, nail down the panelists. Is it is it possible to perhaps send uh, send the planning commission uh, members uh, the topics that you're looking to speak on, uh, just so yeah, we can? Okay, I can send you. Uh, yeah, we're we're trying to iron those out right now. We're looking at a couple of internal topics where we be more more of a focused interview with specific developers and then we're looking at I think we got like three topics that we're going to open up to the public then at the end okay. large zoom presentation when we pull everything together 
Okay. And, and just a mind, and it sounds just by that comment, you may be already thinking along, along these lines. And I, I think Mr. Shudo uh, has had some, some thoughts on this, which may not be as, uh, as doable during the pandemic, but, but uh, just, just um, the thinking that it would be useful to have some of the large, uh, I guess I'll say interest groups that may not be totally accurate, but you know, we, have, we have a couple of different types of people that do a lot of uh, uh, work and time in, in the township. So you, got, you, know, you, have, you have property owners, you have business owners, you have uh, commercial owners, you have builders, you have developers, that sorts of things. Uh, just might be, might be interesting to have a couple of, of narrow um, uh, workshop type things to get, to get ideas and, and talk through uh, with, with some of those specific interest groups. Sounds like, again, you might be, you might be on that trail already, but that was one of the things you're I was reading, hoping that you'd be uh, you're working reading with. your minds. <laughs> Perfect. Good <laughs> to hear. All right. And, and yeah, if you can send those out to us, uh, I know um, particularly um, there was, as we've talked about before, there was a little bit of conversation about it with the, with the election. I know we've been, um, as, as I'm sure you guys have heard, uh, we've been concerned about getting this process started for a while now, but uh, yeah, I want to make sure we, we, uh, we hit all the, hit all the things we need to hit and not just do it quickly. So. Yep. All right. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That's all I had. Thank you, Mr. Tuckfield. Any other commissioners? Mr. Oliver, do I see your name there? Do you have anything? Well, do you want me to do? My... Oh, no, no, not yet. Not yet. I'm going to comment. Okay. First. Okay. Right. Um, I'm going to kind of echo. I'm going to kind of echo Mr. Tuckfield and getting the, the community involved. And I'm wondering if there's a way that we could actually see each other and see the people that are calling in. Um, it's very hard sometimes to, to do this remotely, yes, but it's also very hard to do this when you can't see anybody. So I opened yep. up the chat at the beginning of the meeting today just so I would make sure that I didn't see or miss any of our citizens who maybe didn't want to speak, but wanted to comment. But I think maybe if we could go down that road, I don't know if you could do that with the, the Board of Trustees, but I'm sure you might be able to do it with um, maybe the ZBA or the Planning Commission. So that's my comment for the night. And now we'll move to Macomb Township Board of Trustee Liaison, Mr. Oliver. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Hardy. A uh, couple things. Uh, on the August 12th meeting, we uh, the board has recommended to continue the pathway gap closure program. I think that's going to be a great uh, thing to continue. Uh, when we do that, uh, it, just, it just helps bring these subdivisions together. It helps people uh, uh, access certain areas of the community that, that they'd either have to ride their bike or walk or whatever, skate, board on the, on the street. So, so that, that's very good for us. Uh, I'd also like to thank all the people involved in that um, <clears throat> closure program because it, it's quite a lot of people that work on that. So I want to thank them for all the hard work they've done on that. Uh, the new park, it's opened on 26 mile road, like Mr. Shudo said, and I felt the same way that we could, we could get some more signage out there. Uh, there's one sign we definitely need is uh, the pathways are nice and big. And uh, you could actually drive a vehicle or a scooter or whatever motors, motorized vehicle on there. And we don't want to see that. Uh, as far as walking, I walked it. Uh, I walk every day, so uh, it wasn't too much. But, but I thought it was really scenic and quiet. And uh, at the time, it was bug-free because we're quite dry out. But still, it was nice, and I think there's uh, some potential for that park. Uh, the lastly, uh, if anyone hasn't noticed, the dome was put on our new library, and it was uh, uh, put on there, I think, last Wednesday. And um, it's uh, moving forward, and I think that's going to be a great asset to our community. And that is it. Right. Thank you, Mr. Oliver. 
Mr. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Shudo. Can I ask Mr. Oliver if you can do us a favor on the Planning Commission? Sure. Many years ago, we've approved the dog park and the pickleball courts. I was wondering if you can give us an update at the next meeting on the progress, where they're going to go, and, and how soon you think they'll be in. I could do that, sir. I'd appreciate that. Yep. Okay. I will get that information for you. Good question, Mr. Shudo. Um, moving on to the ZBA liaison. Mr. Tuckfield, you're up. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we've had uh, one meeting, uh, I believe, since our last Planning Commission meeting. I think it was the day after, actually. Um, we looked at a couple of uh, different uh, pool variances, which we've talked about. Um, and uh, in most of those cases, we've generally been finding a practical difficulty consistent with, uh, with past cases and approving them. That, that was the case with these. Um, I don't want to speak to the case at all, but um, just a note that we did see a variance request for the medical building on Hall Road um, west of North Avenue. Um, I believe that meeting is public if you wish to listen to it. I don't want to speak to it too much. We did table that item um, for, for more discussion, um, but uh, the, the Planning Commission might find it interesting uh, to follow along. Hopefully, uh, by the time we get to our next meeting, uh, or possibly a meeting after that, I might have some update on how that particular uh, item uh, ended up uh, ended up turning out. Um, but uh, that would be all on the on the item side. The only other thing I would mention to echo Mr. Uh, Hardy's comments with video, um, it's something that the CBA members have talked about. Um, we actually talked about it a little bit during our last meeting uh, publicly. Um, I, uh, without saying it too strongly, I'm I'm fairly strongly in favor of it. Um, I haven't wanted to say too much. There's a lot of layers up to it. Um, I don't know how possible it is or what other difficulties there might be. Uh, sometimes things that seem simple aren't, and that might be the case here. Uh, and I also didn't really want to push ZBA out before other boards. Sometimes it can be difficult because what one board does might affect another. But I will say that I'm also in support of that uh, generally, particularly if we don't expect to be back in person. I think having the ability to use video if you choose to, uh, because I don't think it's required to use video um, if you're on the call. I think that ability helps significantly uh, to interact with the public. And something that I've noticed during the time I've been on boards um, is that um, when people come to a meeting, whether virtually or in person, the first thing that I see is particularly if they don't know anybody on the board or never met them, I should say, and inter you know, interacted with them, there is a very low level of trust. And, and there can be, you know, various reasons for it. There can be reasons for uh, from people outside of the board or general mistrust of an official, uh, official action or concern or whatever the case may be. Um, but, but my experience has been that one of the, the, the first layers of difficulty is making sure that there's there's a trusting relationship. And that doesn't mean everybody always agrees or that we do what everybody wants or, or anything of that nature. But, but having the trust that the, the members of the board uh, and the, the department heads and, and the petitioners and, and everyone is, is trying to work toward a good resolution seems to be one of the first and, and biggest um, uh, roadblocks to achieving a, a good outcome. And, and I think that not being able to see people um, during these meetings beyond just the ability to communicate, it's a big hindrance toward that. You know, we read a lot through body language, uh, being able to see what people do. Um, and without that, it's much harder to, to understand that. And it's also much easier to mistake uh, voices and, and tones for things. So I just, I, it's, I think it's along the lines of what Mr. Hardy was saying uh, in, in the general outcome, but hopefully we can look into it. Uh, adding the video capability. I, I'm pretty sure ZBA is willing to. I know I've talked to other members on there. Um, I don't know what all the, the roadblocks to, but I would be to it, but I would certainly be in favor and supportive of having that option uh, on the Planning Commission and would, would do anything uh, needed on my part to help with that. So just want to pass along those, those thoughts as well to kind of dovetail with what you were saying there, Mr. Hardy. So that would be all I have. Okay, sir. Any department items? Yes, I think Mr. Uh, Skirto touched on uh, a lot of what we're doing with the master plan update. Um, lots to come in the future for that. Uh, we are also 
uh, as, as we work with uh, some of these developers that come before you, um, in the past, there have been a lot of hard copy submissions. We are going to vir uh, virtual or electronic submissions of items. Uh, and in that process, we are revising a lot of our applications uh, for developers for different items. Um, so that's another thing that we're working on. I did want to comment on the park out on 26 Mile. I have also been out there. Um, I was given a tour actually by our facilities uh, manager. Uh, so I actually was able to go around the property in a, in a cart. So I didn't walk the property. Uh, I wrote, uh, but I have heard several comments from folks other than yourselves uh, that people are not sure of the trails because they don't know how far they are uh, and, and whether or not uh, they can uh, walk the duration of the trail. So I think something coming up with some type of a, a map or maybe some wayfinding signage uh, is something that we can look into uh, in the future uh, to make that park uh, a little bit more user friendly. And I think that's all I've got for you. Okay, sir. Sounds good. Motion to adjourn. So Motion to adjourn by Tuckfield. Seconded by Shudo. Motion to adjourn by Mr. Tuckfield. Seconded by Mr. Shudo. Mr. Bentley, please call the roll. Mr. Bentley, are you still there? He's muted. Mr. Bentley, you're muted. Somebody's got their Hello. Mr. Bentley, can you guys hear me? We can now. Go ahead. Uh, something happened. Um, okay, uh, Mr. Tuckfield. Yes. Mr. Uh, Shudo. Yes. Mr. Provisano. Yes. Mr. Oliver. Yes. Mr. Bentley, yes. And Mr. Hardy. Yes. Meeting is adjourned at 8.52 p.m. Thank you, everyone. Have a good evening.